Good morning. Thanks for coming out. So I see a lot of faces that are familiar. Uh, Evan reached out to me a few years ago to start an Axon here in Fort Lauderdale. And uh, what, what this club is, is basically a goal setting support group. Uh, how many people know of something that they want to do with their lives, but for whatever reason they haven't gotten started? And know, they know, uh, what about somebody who knows all the steps that they need to do to get something that they want, but like for example, um, get six pack abs or start that business or whatever. We know what we need to do, but why don't we do it, right? Why? You're about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I haven't always been some uber achiever guy. I started this club when I was just about to turn 30. And I thought I was going to show up to my 10-year reunion in a helicopter. I remember being a kid <laughs> thinking, I, oh yeah, by the time I have my 10-year reunion, I'm going to show up in a helicopter, and it's going to be awesome. And you know, I'm gonna have been like this thing under my belt and that thing and da 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 da. I showed up to my 10 year reunion in a hoopty. And shortly after that, uh, uh, right around my 30th birthday, I was 29 and I was looking at my life and I, I felt like my life was passing me by. Like I had all these things that I wanted to do with my life, but I, it, hadn't, it hadn't started yet. Like I felt like, like there was a failure to launch. Like my life was still at a place that I was waiting for something to happen. And it hadn't happened yet. Anybody ever have that feeling? Like someday, right? Someday, when this happens, once I get this done, then I can. And one of the biggest lies that we tell ourselves in, in uh, modern day society is that, uh, you know, we go to school to then get into maybe uh, a good college or a graduate program, to then get that internship, to then get that entry level job, to then be able to be headhunted to that other position, to then be able to go up the corporate ladder to get that corner office, to then be able to get into the best cemetery on earth. <laughs> right? At what point did he do any living? And so I was, I was already working um, as a, um, in, in Prudential as a financial advisor and I had uh, things that I wanted and I just felt stuck. And I was listening to all the TED Talks and reading the, the personal development and the positive psychology stuff. But again, how many of you have read a book, five rules to this, 12 steps to that, da 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 da, and you know all the things that are in the book, you know you're like, oh man, that, that makes sense. I'm so gonna do that. And you, you set out on, on Friday to do it, by, by Monday, it's collecting dust on your bookshelf. That was my frustration. And so I knew I wasn't the only one. And I was really depressed, actually. I was in a really dark place. Uh, I was in a relationship, and uh, she was, became the primary breadwinner because I was trying to make it work with my business. And I was struggling, and I was failing bad. And not just that, I, had, I hadn't done anything else besides focus on my business. My relationship was falling apart. And I just felt like, man, there has to be something I can do. And I remember getting um, a, the alarm clock going off for maybe the 11th or 13th time and feeling the frustration of not being able to get out of bed. And I had a little dog at the time, similar to this little dog sitting on Flip's, <laughs> Flip's lap. Uh, it was a miniature schnauzer. Her name was Lola. And uh, I remember I, I didn't even have the energy to take Lola out. I remember she peed and pooped inside of the house. And I was so embarrassed. My, my partner at the time, she was a, a math teacher, a high school math teacher. And I was so embarrassed to have her find me still in bed that um, I, I quite literally dragged myself out, like rolled on the floor and dragged myself out of bed because I just like, I, I felt like a loser. And um, I went to the library, I put on some clothes and I went to the library <laughs> <laughs> to, 
to make it look as if I had put in a full day's work, but I was ashamed of being so depressed and so lost. And so, you know, I mean, we've seen a lot of celebrities and stuff that struggle with mental health issues and depression and, you know, a lot of suicide. And I wasn't, I never tried to kill myself or anything like that, but, you know, I was at that place, and I know this is a very common human experience in modern day society, where I wasn't going to kill myself, but if I died, I wouldn't struggle, right? I would have accepted it. I would have, like, if the world just would have swallowed me up, I would have, I would have, like, delved into whatever it was. And, and so I went to the library and I just, I saw another TED talk and something from Tony Robbins and whatever. And I just felt like, you know, it makes total sense, but I can't get myself to do it. And then I just thought, you know, if maybe I just had somebody that was also working on something like this, like also trying to make something happen and I can help them, it'd kind of be like a workout buddy. Right? Like, uh, you, ever, you ever say, oh, I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow morning, and then you don't end up going? But if you tell your friend, hey, I'm going to meet you at the gym every day this week at 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. or whatever it is, you don't want to let that person down. Right? And so I thought, well, I'll give it a shot. Let me see if any of my friends want to get together and talk about our goals and see what happens. And I, I reached out to some of my friends, and uh, it, it goes to show, they say that you're the average of the five people you hang out with the most, or, or you are your environment. I reached out and, and none of my friends thought it was something that was worth their while. So I put it up on Meetup, I put it up on Facebook, I, I put it up on Craigslist, uh, hoping a serial killer didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, 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 I just, I set up a meeting at the library where I didn't know what I was doing, but I just wanted to start something where we would talk about our goals for two hours and hold each other accountable to whatever we say we were gonna do this week, show up next week. And the way I kind of phrased it was like, AA is for substance abuse, Axen is for procrastinators, <laughs> right? And so I thought, well, you know, we'll see what happens. It's been seven years since that point. And the first assignment, those of you who have come to Axon, the first thing that everybody does is write their life list, their bucket list, 150 plus things of the things you want to do. If you write more than 276, you get a lap dance and or a burrito. <laughs> the, the lap dance doesn't have to be for me. Uh, and uh, really what it is, it, it's, it's essentially the things that you want to make in your life. Like what do you want your life to be about? Uh, I, I did a, a, a podcast with Evan a few days ago and um, I talked about the cause and effect chain right like you're in life you're either at cause or you're at effect and that means that you're either happening to life or life is happening to you and at that point before I started life was happening to me and until I put down my list of 270 I mean it didn't start off at 276 I had like 230 goals at one point and now it's gone up to 276 because I continue adding stuff. I, um, I really, it started changing me. And it didn't change me overnight because most of us want to go to a seminar or read a book or do something or come to one talk and be like, that guy Dynamo, that's it. He fixed me. Great. Bullshit. Anybody that tells you that, full of shit. Right? There isn't a, there isn't a course. There isn't, it's compounding over time showing up for yourself because one of the things how we've created our identity and how we've gotten how I got to that point when I was 30 and I was lost was making certain decisions over and over and over and the same way a pearl starts off as a grain of sand and calcifies and becomes a pearl I had a story that I was telling myself that became oh dynamo the victim right and it's taken a while for me to weather that pearl down to nothingness and create a new pearl. But it takes time and repetition. And so Axon isn't a seminar. It's not a, oh, it's basically something that we all intrinsically know. If you get together and you talk to what it is, whatever it is that you want to do with people, human beings that are going to hold you accountable, you're going to go in the directions of the, of the things you want. 
and you're going to start creating things. And so everybody has a primary goal at Accent, right? Uh, my first primary goal was to do a bunch of stand-up comedy open mics, and I did a bunch of them. And then I said, well, what happens if I do 25 stand-up comedy open mics, and at the end of this year, I still have a bunch of goals and a bunch of things, and my relationship's falling apart, and it's because of finances, right? And I said, well, I'm going to make a million dollars through my business. Mind you, I hadn't made $100,000. I hadn't made, I pro probably at that point, I was making somewhere in the vicinity of like, well, that year I was making like $11,000, uh, really. Uh, but um, I, I had never made over like 60, right? And so it was totally outside of the paradigm. And so um, that year, do you want to guess what happened? I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> what, what do you think happened that year? No, I didn't make a million dollars. Second year. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to skip to the punchline. It, four and a half years, uh, I continued to show up. And in that time, I didn't just do the million dollar goal. I did other goals because goal achievement or just creating that grain of sand into the pearl isn't just about that one big goal. I started doing other things. I started doing the things that I said I, w I wanted to do. I looked at my list. And it, it, w it wasn't about the goals on the list. It was about me witnessing myself, showing up for myself, doing things I said I was going to do. So I went skydiving. I went white water rafting. I went hang gliding, rock climbing. I uh, slept in a sem sensory deprivation chamber for two hours where you're in basically a coffin with water that's heated to the body temperature of your body and the salinity of the, of the Dead Sea, so you float, and it's like a float tank, and it's uh, soundproof and completely dark, and you get into a meditative state and you hallucinate. I see some of you are already having claustrophobic panic attacks, <laughs> shaking your head. Um, uh, I, I um, went to, to Europe. Um, I've done things like uh, I tried to be an extra on Game of Thrones. <laughs> Failed miserably at that, too but had a lot of fun. And in each one of those, like for example, when I went skydiving, I uh, was strapped to a guy that had done like 10,000 dives, right? And I, and I told him about the club and what I was doing and I was there with another couple of Axon members. And uh, he said, oh, if I went to your club, I know what my goal would be. My goal would be to, to overcome my fear of public speaking. And I'm like, hold on. Hold on. I'm strapped onto this guy. I'm like, hold on, dude. How many times have you jumped out of airplanes? He's like, yeah, like uh, I'm, a, I'm over 10,000. And I'm like, what? Uh, how many people are you afraid of talking to? He's like, more than 10, I would have a panic attack. And you know, that made me realize fear is irrational. When I learned how to sail, do you know when you're sailing, you're off course 98% of the time? <laughs> and, and you don't control the wind, you control the sail. And what that basically does is that it helps you kind of teeter-totter in the direction of where you're going. Isn't that another metaphor for life? Yes. Right? The space shuttle that went to the moon was on course less than 2% of the time. So a lot of us who feel lost, we're heading in the direction, right? And when I went rock climbing for the first time and I overcame my fear of, of, of uh, heights, <laughs> I remember that feeling of just realizing that if you just stay on the wall, you can make it, right? And so it's not about any specific goal. It's, again, who you become in the pursuit of each one of those goals. So as I... As I look at some of the faces here, uh, we have Enid, who, yeah, round of applause, who I met about a year and a half ago. And uh, Enid came to Axon after Evan put together another event. Shout out to Evan one more time. And shout out to, the, to Tim and all the people here at General Provisions, who uh, we host Axon at the General Provisions in Fat Village. So uh, every other Tuesday. And so the, the um, 
when, when Enid came, she was kind of like a podcast addict. <laughs> and also somebody who had um, a deep love for storytelling. And uh, she's a great uh, brand branding expert. Uh, if any of you are thinking about starting a business or you come to Accent, she's the branding person, hands down. Uh, but she came and she had, uh, the first time she just kind of checked it out. The second time she, she kind of like squeaked out, I kind of want to start this, this event where people tell really raw stories. And I was in the group with her. And now it's been over a year that she's been doing raw storytelling. And so what raw storytelling, how it began, was as an idea at Accent. And it wasn't something that I said or anybody said. It's there's something that happens when you're just going intentionally to a place and you're talking about the things that you want and you're getting support. And it's not just about me achieving something or Enid achieving something. There is something that happens when you witness somebody who is going through the journey of a struggle and they come through it. You, you, we, we learn by that process because we put these people that achieve all these things on a pedestal, like their DNA is just different, right? But it's not the case. And so going back to my million dollar goal, <laughs> uh, so I, I work in healthcare, I have my own company, I do business development and mergers and acquisitions in the healthcare field. And so after four and a half years of working in healthcare, uh, I'm sorry, w trying different businesses, because I tried a bunch of different businesses over that time. Um, finally, healthcare, like within less than a year, I made the million dollars. And it's a kind of a, a, a little bit of an involved story, but basically when Obamacare came out, um, I was already in financial services. Uh, I helped a group uh, that, that enrolled 60,000 Obamacare members. They asked me to be a part of their board of directors. And while I was a part of their board of the directors, I saw all the different opportunities that there were to make money with the new members that didn't have insurance. So people came from not having insurance to having insurance. Then I, I started understanding how healthcare worked and then I, I, I realized, oh, there's really great opportunities on the financial side of medicine. And within less than a year, I had made a million dollars. And uh, I, well, thank you. But here's the real lesson. <laughs> Here's the real lesson. So how it worked is that I had equity in a company that ended up uh, uh, being valued at, uh, my portion would have been over two million, like two and, two and a quarter million dollars. And uh, when we were gonna sell, I was gonna get that portion. Uh, now in healthcare, there's a lot of, um, uh, a lot of cost associated and you need a lot of uh, uh, capital it's capital intensive. We're working with insurance companies. They require a lot of reserves, et cetera. I'm not gonna bore you with the details, but essentially when we went to go sell, my business partner was gonna make me sue him to get the money. So here I am, the guy that was depressed in bed four and a half years in the desert to get to this point, and there's my moment of truth where I realized, oh, this guy's screwing me. And I had a contract, but there were certain stipulations that I just, I, I, I didn't foresee. I thought it was a, a, some things that, well, I had a contract, but when I went to go talk to an attorney, I realized, oh, this guy's already done this three or four times. He's worth 50 plus million dollars. If I go to war with him, I'm gonna burn my bridges in the industry and there's no guarantee that I'll win. So without going to war, I didn't know what to do. And I remember going home after having that conversation and I remember taking a day and, and I, felt like I, how, I felt like I was back at square one. I felt like I was back in bed. And I actually went back to bed that day. <laughs> and I remember thinking about my little dog Lola and uh, I was no longer with that partner. And uh, I remember thinking like, I wonder where Lola is. <laughs> and I remember just feeling that sense of Am I, am I crazy, right? Like, am I, am I wasting everybody's time? Am I like trying to be a dreamer and an achiever and am I really a fraud? I remember I was doing a book club, I'm a voracious reader, and I was, we were doing a book club for Accent um, on the subtle art of not giving a fuck. And 
And I remember a few days later, we were going to do that book club. <clears throat> and I remember showing up and a bunch of Axum people, probably like 20 Axum people were there. And, um, and I explained to them what happened. Uh, because I, I realized I didn't want to keep it in. And uh, I realized right after that, that, hold on a second, I just stayed in bed one day. And I had gotten back on it. And I had taken meetings. And it took me another year to get another deal. And it took me another eight months to get business back on the books that now <laughs> I have a contract and all the things in place to be able to say I'm a millionaire again. Yeah. But before you ask me for a loan and before we have the party, <laughs> this time I'm gonna actually say it's not about the million bucks because I realize I was putting a certain value on who I am as a person by saying like, oh, I'm a millionaire. But I don't care, I could lose it again and again and again. I don't plan to. <laughs> but it's really who I've become in the process of this goal. And that's why the name of the club is called Accent. I know um, at one point it was called Action Club, but I realize it's more than just action. Um, Albert Einstein says, nothing happens until something moves. He couldn't explain the universe until something moved. And so the Big Bang is the first thing that moved. So he could rewind the clock to the Big Bang, and then everything else is that cause and effect chain. But it's not just about cause and effect and just taking action, because another great, qu great quote by my favorite philosopher Socrates is that nothing, uh, sorry, the unexamined life is not worth living. To the core of that self-discovery, which is really what this journey is all about. Because that's what life is, it's a journey. So, I've done over 90 of my goals, and uh, I'm approaching 100 actually soon. Um, recently, uh, I, I made the mistake of listening to a book uh, by this guy called David Goggins. <laughs> and so uh, David Goggins is his Navy SEAL, and um, he, he's this guy who's like, he has the, the world pull-up record, or he had it at one point. He, uh, a marathon is, is 26 miles. This guy runs like 200 miles. Yeah. And uh, so I'm listening to this book in my gym, doing the elliptical, right, in my very comfortable air-conditioned gym. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to run through a wall. This guy's awesome, <laughs> listening to the audio book. And the idea came to me as he's talking. He says, you don't really discover who you are until you discover suffering and pain. In that moment when you're stripped bare and you're just confronted with the visceral pain, <clears throat> excuse me, of like giving up, of not knowing what's gonna happen next, of like feeling your body shutting down. In that moment, that's where your mind meets your matter. And you don't know who you are until you confront yourself in that way. And I remember saying, man, I don't wanna die without, without knowing who I am. And <laughs> I, I looked at my calendar as I'm on the elliptical machine, and I, you know, I, I'm making uh, two documentaries currently, uh, I have Accent, I have my own business, um, I have another side business project that I have going on, I have some real estate stuff that I do. I have 13 projects that I'm currently working on. I went from not being able to get out of bed to being able to learn how to juggle, right? I'm in Landmark, uh, shout out to Chris for coming, she's in Landmark with me. And um, you know, it's, it's, it was just like, man, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do it for like seven weeks. And I said, no, it was a Tuesday. I said, no, 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 no. I'm doing it this weekend. I have time this weekend. It's the only weekend for like two months that I have an availability. I'm gonna do it this weekend. And I went to Axe in Fort Lauderdale and I had just thought of it this mo that morning. And I was like, hey, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna run 100 miles on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody was like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, I, mind you, I didn't train, like, you know, I go to the gym and I do like workouts, but like, I, I'm not, I'm not some Navy SEAL ultra marathon runner, but I, I decided I'm going to do hundred miles. And, um, I started, uh, Saturday, Friday midnight, Saturday morning, you know, 
Uh, and I, I said, I'm gonna do it in 24 hours, like David Goggins did. He did 100 miles in 24 hours. The guy's a Navy SEAL. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did, uh, well, I'll, I'll let you guys guess. Do you get, wanna guess what happened? Did 50 miles. I did 60 miles nice. on Saturday, and I didn't fucking quit. I did 100 miles and it took me 48 hours. Wow. And I didn't sleep because I realized that I was either gonna die or I was gonna finish. <laughs> and that is such a departure. Like I feel goosebumps in my body and I know you guys are looking at me but this is a moment for me. <laughs> I felt, that is such a departure from the person who I was, that victim, that I felt so proud of myself. And as an only child raised by a bunch of uh, you know, immigrant parents uh, and, and really a single mom because my dad wasn't in my life, I was always trying to prove myself. And that's what the million dollars was about. And that's what 100 miles was about. And, that, and I realized, oh, I love me. That's really what this has been all about. It's about finding that love. And so that's where that Zen, that ax Zen comes in, that unexamined life is not worth living. So I was talking to Aaron. Lori, sorry. I keep on saying, you look like my friend who's named Aaron. I was talking to Lori. Lori just started coming to Axon. And uh, she was telling me that she's, she were an art teacher for how many years? 17 years she was an art teacher. And as a kid, that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be an artist. And really, when I sell my business, what I want to do is I want to make documentaries, and I want to do stand-up comedy, and I want to make art, and I want to do creative stuff. Axon is essentially a creative thing that I made. And because you can plug up a hose, right? But if, you know, of that creative energy or whatever it is that life essence is that, you, that we all carry inside of us, but it's gonna come out some other way, right? And so Lori said to me, um, you know, I've been, I've been an artist for, I mean, I've been an art teacher for 17 years and I've been making all this art and I'm pretty prolific and she has some really amazing pieces. And, but, you know, I've never sold a piece. And, you know, I have these pieces that are this big and I want to make these pieces and all this. And I didn't ask for permission to call her out like this, but <laughs> there's a moral to this story um, that part of what happens at Axon is that you get support and you get people that believe in your dreams. And um, I wanted to buy your first piece of art. So I'm wow. going to give you 50 bucks <laughs> for the four by six pieces. Um, because I know what it's like to be an artist and to have that desire to just have that art appreciated because it's a very intimate thing. Same way starting raw. Yeah. You're the first person to pay for anything that I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, I normally don't do it grandstanding like this. You know, I do it privately. But I really just hope for you guys to show up for yourselves. I don't, accent is a free thing. I'm not looking to make money from it. I'm banging my head against the wall doing healthcare stuff, right? Because I don't want to make money as a life coach or, or, or as, as like charging for meetings or anything like that. It's a really pure thing where I just want to create something where people just help people achieve their dreams. The same way Evan just wants to make the 954 and Broward for Lauderdale, this really awesome thing. Round of applause for Evan. <laughs> With events like this, with just like, there's good people out there. And some of the greatest experiences that people have isn't necessarily achieving a goal. Some people come to accident when they get a divorce or when they have a frustrating moment or when they have a family member die. And having a support network of people that just care in the things that you care about is something that's lost. I know that there's churches out there and there's things like that, but there isn't something that doesn't have an agenda except for what it is that you want and you want to support what you and so, uh, Axon meets every Tuesday, every other Tuesday, mm -hmm. at Fat Village General Provisions, and uh, we've grown. So this is something that I started, like I said, seven years ago. There's a chapter in Fort Lauderdale, there's a chapter in Orlando, there's one in Miami, in Wynwood, there's one in uh, FIU, there's a couple in California, uh, Monroe, Louisiana, Monroe, Louisiana. <laughs> yeah, uh, Denver, Colorado, New York, um, 
There, yeah, there's yeah, uh, more than I can keep track of at the moment. <laughs> and uh, it's just kind of grown. And hopefully it goes from, you know, the you know, eight to nine to 10 clubs that there are now to hundreds to thousands. Because I really believe that the, the real core of what I'm looking to do is create a space where we could where we can collectively encourage and inspire one another to achieve our dreams. Thank you. All right, so Q&A. Well, I, uh, before we get into Q&A, um, I, I just want to follow up on uh, on something you said. You know, people go to TED Talks or they come to talks like this and you get fired, you know, fired up and supercharged. And it's like, man, like, I'm ready to go take on the world. But like, really, what are you supposed to do with that? So Action Club is really an extension of your inspiration of talks like this, of, you know, whatever. And, and it really is a, a mini mastermind group, an accountability support group where neutral third party strangers that end up becoming your friends sit around the table and help you innovate your goals. And I want to say it because we, we discussed this on the podcast, we've discussed this before at length. I don't know why there's this, this skepticism or mythicism around like, you know, is there a catch? Like, why would you guys take time out of your life to sit there and help people with their goals for free? Well, you know why? Because it's the right thing to do. Woo! You know what I mean? And um, yeah, and, and there, is, there is no catch, there is no hidden agenda, there is no course, we're not selling anything. Has your life changed from come to Action Club? Absolutely. So um, we encourage you to come. I, th I did just want to say that because um, for some reason, it's not that we're frustrated that the club's not growing, we, we continually get new members and new people coming, but uh, we want to extend this to everybody, you know, anybody, so. So I'm, I'm a you invited me here today. I didn't know what I was. I thought it was an art talk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're like, so, so I, but, but I was happy. I, I was just. I, I walked in. I love the space. I love the energy. I just was happy to be here. Very creative. <coughs> I was glad it wasn't an art talk. It was. <laughs> so, so, so I would like to come. I, I, I can't understand what's it. A X E N. Oh, okay. I can understand. Yeah, and and next you next said day. every other Tuesday. Every other so Tuesday. this Tuesday or the next. Tuesday? The next upcoming Tuesday. What? It's in the Choose Nine Five Four newsletter. You find on Choose Nine Five Four. What time? Seven to about nine p.m. Okay, I, I'd like to come. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Me too. Great. Awesome. And we have a Facebook group. How people get connected okay. is on Facebook. It's a private Facebook group that people communicate. Mm -hmm. And so some people just follow the Facebook group, okay. and they can't make it to meeting because they have other commitments. Oh. But uh, they just pop in and out. Uh, some people are there, you know, religiously every week or every other week. In, in Fort Lauderdale's case, the Miami Club meets every week. <clears throat> so it's really there for just whatever it is that you need. And uh, like Emma was saying, there's nothing we're selling or anything like that because it's not any like there is kind of like a, a culture. We we do talk about goals, and I'll, I'll do a Q and A uh, with you guys if you, if you have a goal and, and are a little frustrated or just want to see uh, some of the things that how we structure it. Um, but yeah, it's just people helping people. Let's actually do that before we get into If you talk that. to the young lady on your right, she's there a lot, so. Yes, uh, yes. Who, who for the sake of the exercise and the sake of uh, this simulation would like to volunteer their, their goal, idea, or dream? Oh. Right? Pick someone else first. <laughs> I want to be a famous author. Nice. Awesome. Great. Have you worked with any publishers or writing coaches? A bit, yeah. Okay. And what has that helped transpire? I, well, I wrote a book. Um, I ended up going down the road, the route, the road of self-publishing, <laughs> and I'm writing a second one, but I want a traditional publisher. For that so, one. So there's a process that uh, I'd like you to talk about what that we do in Action Club called smarting your goals. Yeah. So um, I'll give you a quick example of what smarting looks like. Just so like we'll have people come and they'll say, uh, I want to do good in the world or um, I want to be healthy. Right. And what I mean, eat a salad one time <laughs> that's healthier than you were previously or go outside and give a, a homeless person a dollar 
did good, right? You're a good person. But it's massaging out what that means. So being a famous author, um, does that mean being a New York Times bestseller? Yeah. That, right? So we, we start with specific, it's smart, S-M-A-R-T. Specific, measurable, actionable, results driven with a time constraint, right? And so um, let's start with the S and the M. So what does a famous author look like? So I have one specific vision Perfect. and then supporting things that go with Great. that. I would like to be able to walk onto an airplane or into a room and see somebody reading my book who has no idea who I am and just see them enjoying it. Mm. Um, additionally to that, I would love to be invited to speak um, at colleges or universities or do TED Talks <laughs> surrounding whether it's specifically what I'm writing um, about or the themes that I write about. Okay, great. So that's great for specific. Now measurable. In terms of um, how many books do you want to sell? Like, is there, is there, and mind you, this is, okay, but. Yeah, so this is where my um, neuroses or anxiety comes in. Because yeah. then I think, if I put it out there, am I capping myself? So like, do, do I say I want to write six best-selling books but then am I shooting myself in the foot? Should I say a hundred? But then is that really realistic or what I'm looking for? What's your name? Ryan. Ryan. Ryan, uh, if you say six best-selling books and then you only do one or two. Uh... I would be thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> I would be unbelievably thrilled. I'm, I've always been taught, you know, turn up the volume yeah. and make it as loud as it can be. So the um, opportunities are limitless. Yeah, and but then what, I get anxious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and uh, what happens? And this is part of what we talk about at Accent is if I were to ask you to walk across um, a plank of wood that's uh, you know eight inches wide, and it was from this wall to you know let's let's say it, it went fifty yards, right? And but it was a foot off the ground. You'd be able to balance yourself and do it. When you're saying, oh, I gotta sell six you know, New York Times bus, you're putting it in between two skyscrapers. Yeah, so sure. it's the same plank of wood, it's the same actions, but you're upping the stakes. So uh, with measurable, it's great to have, I wanna be a six time New York Times best selling author that uh, goes onto a plane and recognize it and see somebody reading my book that doesn't know who I am. Great, but let's get to actionable because you'll see what are the actions that somebody like that would take. You're asking me. Yeah. Well, I first have to get a book published or get a lit agent or write the book first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to I have to finish the second one that I'm working on and get the manuscript finalized. Yeah. Um, in order to do that, if I'm creating action set aside, like what I'm doing now is setting aside um, hours in the week to sit down and write something I read recently by Elizabeth Gilbert was to treat writing like having a love affair and sneak off and just write secretly like yeah. in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, find these pockets of time, even if you're in a busy day, just to enjoy and, and write. Yeah, yeah. Steve Pressfield says the same thing in the book. I love that. Yeah. So, um, did you guys hear all the actions? He already knows what he needs. <coughs> right? Um, but there's that, like, you know, that, that emotion. So you asked me a question right at the beginning. Uh, why don't we do it, right? What was your question? Yes, that's it. Okay. So the reason we don't do it is purely emotional. It's because we create a, our limbic system is five times stronger than our prefrontal, prefrontal cortex. Uh, just because our lizard brain, it's fight, flight, or freeze, right? And so when we see what happens if I write this book, and nobody reads it, it, does that mean I'm not worthwhile and will people judge me, and the, right? And we start in that path. And, uh, but really it's, it's about creating a support system because you start to see that a lot of the emotional things can be quelled by just having a support system, right? So you already said what you need to do, you need to write X amount, you need to have a manuscript. And then one of the things that we encourage is that while there is a support system at Accent, you find a mentor. You find somebody that's already gone down this path, or you find a writing coach that mentors people that already are, have you know 
good uh, best-selling books. And all right, so the result. Let's get to R. Yeah. What's the which falls into the self-love? That yep. We talked about. Yep. And and the pride. I, you said like your kids or somebody in the airplane <laughs> reading the book, and you were walk in and, and, and see them read, reading the book. And, uh, but the result is really a personal thing. I know those are external representations of something that you're looking right. for internally, but it's getting clear on that internal thing. And then the time constraint is because uh, that could take you 50 years or it could take you five years. And uh, the reason we add a time constraint to the goal is because when we look at it, let's chunk it down to what can happen in a year. So you may not be able to write six bestsellers in a year, but you can chunk your goal down to um, and this is what we do at Accent is you say, hi, my name is Ryan, and my goal is to uh, write a manuscript that gets published and becomes a, a New York Times bestseller, and I'm going to take a bunch of flights, and hopefully somebody's reading the book when I get home. <laughs> because I want to, but more so than anything, I want to feel the personal pride of having that book published. That's it, right? Cool. And so then that actionable stuff, you you already know all the activities, and then the group holds you accountable to all those things. On that private Facebook group, every uh, other week, uh, you say what you're gonna do, and then you get checked in on the following week. I mean, the following time you come to the meeting. Uh, the author has problems with publishers and you know finding the right publisher. So you just have to accept that that's part of the dream, is part of that process. So I could say step one yeah. would be to join Action Club. <laughs> yeah. 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 When we say accountability, no one's sitting there with the gun to your head like, you didn't achieve your goals. There's no shaming. Right. There's no extremely motivational support, no. right? I was going to try that book. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it is private. Um, and we do encourage you guys to come. A-X-E-N. Ask me, Enid, Jenny, <coughs> Debbie, anybody. You know, we're here to help. Uh, with that being said, any uh, questions? I have a question. Um, actually, this is how oh, hey. I started. <laughs> Your husband asked me this question after a talk like this. What's next? For each of you? In general, for you. For me? Yeah. I've been giving that a lot of thought. <clears throat> What's next for me is um, one of the questions I like to ask people at Accent that when they first come is, what would you do if you won the Powerball? And then, you know, the people say all the, I travel and I do this, and I do that. after you do all that stuff, then what? And I've been thinking about that. For me, it's, I'm still, I'm still uh, a ways, maybe 18 to 24, maybe 12 to 18 months away from selling the business. So that's what's next. Uh, but I'm cash flowing now, um, so I'm going to start investing in Accent and creating an infrastructure so that you can connect these other clubs. Uh, maybe stop using Facebook and start using an Accent website that's been in the works for a while um, to connect the clubs in California so that if somebody has a yoga goal in California, they can connect with the yogi in Miami and you know they can work on their goals together and stuff like that. Um, also. Um, I'm making a uh, my third documentary. Um, so I made a documentary interviewing people age 84 and older, um, asking them about the wisdom of their lives. Uh, very proud of that. The second documentary was on public transit in Miami-Dade. And then the third documentary that I'm working on now, I'm really excited. I'm actually going to be working on it with Enid um, that I, I want to talk to her. I'm going to start uh, sometime in the summer. Is I'm going to be filming people um, from the neck down naked talking about their bodies <laughs> yeah right <laughs> and so uh, no faces but they're just going to be everybody has a different relationship with their bodies and so um you know a woman with uh, two different size breasts or a man with a uh, you know a micro penis or a huge penis or somebody who doesn't like their knees or somebody who had a c-section and now feels less attractive or, or somebody who loves their body because they love their roles and you know and just seeing that relationship that people have with their body that's not necessarily tied to the what you see on the screen right and just the beauty of like all different shapes and sizes and i'm not going to be in it <laughs>
I'm just helping you with the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As of now. <laughs> <laughs> so what I want to do, what's what's next is once I sell the business and do all that, is I'm going to dedicate myself to creative projects, art, making documentaries, uh, making podcasts, growing accent, you know, uh, turning that into doing more speaking, stuff like that. Yeah. When is that Which one? Oh, I, I haven't even started filming. So probably uh, nine months out. Maybe even a year. Yeah. How do I see the first one? Uh, the first one I'm going to submit to film festivals, but if you want to see it, I can send you a link. Uh, just don't share it on any social media. Or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Yes. So why are you sending this? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because the the. Um, the bit, that's really where the cash flow, I cash flow now, but really the big windfall is in selling the business. That's really where, where the large chunk of the cash is. So that's where I'll have the party with uh, the cocaine and the hookers on the yacht. <laughs> just kidding. I did grow up in Miami, but really just kidding. Anybody else? 